Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Stephen Werner, CEO of Lawn Buddy. And today I am very fortunate to have a, a, a fantastic guest with us, um, Nick Carlson from MulchMate. So thank you, Nick, so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Great, Stephen. How are you, sir? Doing doing great. It's a it's a great day to be alive. So absolutely. The, uh, um, so before we jump into it, I know a lot of your story. I know a lot of your background, and I know we talked about it with our staff before this. And one of the things that they are fascinated about um, was not only did you start Mulchmate, but also that you're a stock car driver. So could you tell us about that a little bit, kind of that that history, and then we'll jump into Mulchmate. Yeah, for sure. So um, it, it goes back a long, long way. Um, nobody in my family really raced too much. My father did a little drag racing locally. Um, and growing up as a kid, he always wanted to get me into something. Um, and I, I'm a, I'm a very active guy. I always have been, probably always will be as long as I don't get hurt too much. <laughs> and, uh, at seven years old, uh, there was a, a kid in one of my classes and his dad owned a go-kart track. And I didn't know that, but he was wearing one of his, his shirts from his local track that's down in Virginia. We're out of Maryland. And uh, his name is Willie. And uh, one day I looked at Willie. I was like, "What? that's a go-kart on your shirt. He goes, yeah, my dad owns a local track. I was like, no kidding. I said, my dad and I want to get into go-kart racing. We have, we have no clue how to do it. There's, there is no Google. This is like, what is this, 1992? I mean, it was a long time ago. And um, he said, yeah, come on down. So we went down to King George, Virginia. And uh, they had just paved the track and, and uh, found a guy that said, hey, yeah, we'll sell you old go-kart for $300. And so we bought this go kart from this, you know, this old country boy. And uh, these things, keep in mind, these go karts aren't the go karts you see at Sam's Club. This is alcohol fueled, 100 mile an hour slicks, you know, one inch off the ground, not even an inch off the ground. Um, and, and I'm a seven year old kid. And my dad's throwing me in this go kart, and he's like, "Get it, son!" <laughs> and so uh, did that for a number of years, and and eventually got way too tall, way too big for a go kart. And uh, moved up to a, a series called Legends Cars, uh, racing that series for many, many years. Uh, five-time Maryland State champions, um, top five best drivers in the country through the mid-2000s. Um, we raced all over the country in that thing. Uh, I've run dirt uh, late models. I've run asphalt late models. Um, right now, we've taken a little hiatus just because we're getting mulch weight fired up, and it takes all my attention. But um, racing is in my blood. Um, it's just it's more than a redneck sport. Everybody thinks, oh, it's a redneck sport. If you go in the pits, it's money, it's corporations, it's, it's you know, engineers. I mean, literally, these guys are aerospace, you know, rocket engineers. It's, it's unbelievable. So that's, uh, that's our little hobby, I guess, if you will. Yeah, that's, uh, and I think I've told you before, my, growing up, my father uh, raced sprint cars on dirt track. So um, mm -hmm. I, know, I know those pits. I know the the, the fun and excitement that goes in there, but the, it's always neat uh, meeting someone else who has that uh, that type of passion. So uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, but now let's dive into the meat and potatoes about today. Um, you have a fantastic story um, and one that's seared in my brain. And I thought this would be perfect to share um, with as many people as we possibly could share. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you started MulchMate and what mulch made is today. So you gotta, you gotta understand the, the, the pre-story to mulch made is I was a landscaper for 16 years. Um, I actually started my landscape company at 15 years old and it was completely only started to fund the race cars, period. Like that's all it was meant to do. And as I got older in 2007, when the markets all crashed and the economy went to, you know, all the way down to what it did, uh, I lost a huge sponsor and I was going somewhere with the sponsor and it was a mortgage company. It was a, a mortgage business. And when I lost it, all that went away. And so I looked around at all my friends and thought, OK, what do I do here? Do I keep chasing this pipe dream being a race car driver, which, you know, there's there's only so many spots can you can fill in racing? Um, or do I take this little landscape company that's making, you know, six figures? It's making three, four, five hundred thousand dollars at the time. Uh, and I was uh 20 at the time. And, um, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna let the racing go and I'm gonna do it as a hobby and not as a, as a, you know, profession. And, uh, and so I started hammering down on the landscape company and you're know, making good money. 
and eventually it got to the point where the business was, it was so big that I needed to automate the company. And so I was literally <laughs> sitting down eating dinner with my father. And I, I, I was like, I got this idea. I need to move a lot of mulch. I got a lot of contracts coming up that I just got. I think we, I think we had gotten eight or nine huge commercial property contracts. And we had already stressed out all our guys the season previous and you know, doing all the mulching in the spring because it's, it's a huge push. It's thousands of yards. At least it was for us. And when, uh, when I told my guys that we had gotten all these contracts, I didn't see them go, hooray, like, yeah, we got all this work. It was, oh, God, we got all that mulch to put down, boss. And I was like, that's not the look you want to see on your employee's face. It's not. And my, go my goal is not to hurt my people. My goal is to help my people, um, whether it's a customer or it's my employee. The whole point of this whole thing is to solve problems and help. And so I started looking around thinking, well, what could we use? And so I looked at like our salt spreaders and thought, well, what if we put mulch in there and just take the spinner off of the salt hopper? And let the mulch just fall straight into a wheelbarrow. And well, we tried that and that doesn't work. Um, and then you have like the salters that you lift the bed up and it pours the salt out and fills the hopper and that kind of system. And we tried that. That doesn't work. And so I started thinking about all these things and went, OK, cross conveyor. You know, conveyors are not in the landscape industry, but conveyor belts are super common just in in general. And so we yep. started putting together our own system after I don't know how much you know about conveyor belts, but they are expensive, like really wow. expensive. And so we had developed our own conveyor system. And if you go on our Instagram, uh, Multimate USA, uh, at Multimate USA, if you go back maybe uh, 200 posts, you'll see the original video of the original cross conveyor that simply was a conveyor belt. And we put mulch, like just piled mulch on top, put power to the motor and said, is this going to go that way? And so, you know, we, we hit it and the mulch shot off and I went, that, that worked. That was an entire wheelbarrow on that conveyor that worked. Okay. We can do this. This is, this is actually possible. And so we started testing subcomponents and different things to, to, to see if it would all work in harmony. And, you know, of course, over time it, it did. So um, your question was how we get the mulch made. Own a landscape company, a lot of fabrication skills from racing. Um, it's a lot of trial and error and failing. Yep. Now, the, uh, the other thing that was uh, really neat as well uh, is how did you kind of stumble into your first um, taste of fabrication? So with, uh, with starting it, how did you start fabricating the, the mulch mate itself? So the, the original mulch mate, the, the, the plan, the original, the original plan was I'm going to take sheets of steel, not aluminum because the mulch mates are made of aluminum today. Um, but I was going to take steel and I was going to take an angle grinder. I was going to cut it and I was just going to figure it out. And one day, one of my employees that I hired for the landscape company uh, for a manager's position came to me and said, hey, you know, there's drawings you've been working on. Um, I can put that in CAD. And I'm like, well, what's CAD? And he goes, well, it's this computer software that I can take all your dimensions, all this and fold the metal like origami and do what you're doing just in the computer. And I thought, OK, well, go ahead, Houdini, have at it. And so I sat there with him for, I don't know, a month and a half or so and giving him dimensions. And, and I had no clue how much I was going to have to give him, like, like the radius of the bend and the whole size and locations and all these things. So he walked me through all that. And we had gotten all these parts and pieces put together in CAD. And I'm like, that's a machine. Like that came out of my head. I can't believe it. And so we were... We didn't know what metal we wanted. Like I said, the original idea was steel, um, but we learned real quick how it was going to be too heavy. And so at this point in time, I have no clue where to buy metal. No clue. Just I knew where to get stock car metal. There's literally a place called Stock Car Steel we would get that from. But locally here in Maryland, up in Baltimore, there's a steel place called um, Metal Supermarkets. And Metal Supermarkets, I had stumbled across on Google. Thank God for Google. And um, I, I called my old man. I was like, hey. Let's go down there and, and, and just put our hands on some metal and see what feels good. You know, and at the time, I didn't know that there was different types of aluminum, different types of steel. There's hot rolled, cold rolled. There's, you know, 6061. There's 5052 uh, types of aluminum. Different, there's all kinds of hardnesses. And um, 
so we went down there and we just kind of go through the bins, feeling all the metal. And uh, we actually picked the metal that's used today. We picked correctly from day one and we bought one sheet and we said, okay, take this home. Let's figure this out. And uh, on the way back from the metal supermarket, um, it's kind of Northern Baltimore and we live South of Baltimore. Um, and through the city, there's this little, little uh, restaurant called Nick's fish house. And uh, funny Nick and Nick. Hey. And it's one of my favorite seafood places. They have, like the best crab cakes you, you'd never believe in the middle of Baltimore, which isn't great. And, and I'm not super proud of that, but it, I had nothing to do with that, of course, but there's this, this seafood places is fantastic. And so I told my old man, I was like, Hey, you know, I own a business, you own a business. Let's play a little hooky here and have some fun and, and get some really good lunch. We don't, we don't do this very often. We work too yeah. hard. Let's, let's have some fun. And so uh, we had to drive through the city to get there. It took forever. And just as we got to the restaurant, you kind of have to get off this main road and you take a couple back roads and you're, it's right on the water. Uh, but the stoplight, the last stoplight you're at, there is this, this huge building off to the right. And, and typically it's, it's condemned. Like I think they used to store like old trash trucks there. I think the police used it for like training facility back in the day. They had tires everywhere. It was, it was garbage. But this time the building was completely black with this little red stripe around it. It was beautiful, landscaped, all new asphalt parking lots, stripe. I mean, it's gorgeous. And we're like, what happened to that place? That's different. So we sit down. I don't think anything of it. I just thought it was cool. My father, on the other hand, decides, well, I'm going to, I'm going to Google this. And so he starts Googling And at the time, but still is today. It's called city garage. And what that means now that we know what we found out when we Googled was the, the building is, huge and there's these big little businesses all throughout the, the the building so there's like a skateboard place there was a robotics ready robotics was in there and uh the place that we loved was called the foundry and the foundry was unfortunately was a maker space and it was a incubator for manufacturers and these manufacturers basically it was there was a guy a guy named Corey uh and a guy named jason teamed up with the owner of Under Armour, Kevin Plank, and Under Armour's here out of Baltimore. And they basically, what they were trying to do is they were trying to find guys like us that had an idea and they wanted to bring it to market somehow, but had no ability, no tools, no space to do this. So you could rent space, you had water jets, you had CNC machines, you had woodworking, you even had blacksmithing in this place. It is incredible. They probably had 40 computers with different, uh, with all, all of them had um, SolidWorks, the, the CAD programming on it. So you could literally walk in, you could design something, you could prototype it, you could, on a miniature scale, you could manufacture parts and then powder coat them before they leave the shop. And so when we went into this building a couple of days after we went to Nick's Fish House, it was like the angels were singing. <laughs> and, and we walk in, we're like, oh my God, this is exactly what we need. And my, uh, my father and I signed up for some classes. We learned to use the water jet and the, um, the powder coating systems and all that. And within three days, we had taken those CAD drawings that this little landscape guy that I hired accidentally, not knowing he could do CAD, we took all his stuff, all his drawings from CAD and cut it out, bent it and powder coated it right there at the foundry. That's awesome. The, oh. uh, that still blows me away that everything <laughs> kind of fell in place for you. Um, yeah. You can do what you it. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. a so now that we know where you got started, what are you guys doing today? Can you tell some of our users who may not know what MulchMate is or does, some of the products that you have to help them in their lawn and landscape business? Yeah, absolutely. So the MulchMate is, is the flagship product we have here at Dawson Manufacturing. Um, as you can see behind me here, that's a basket door uh, off of the MulchMate. And so what the MulchMate does, it's a rear door replacement uh, for any stake body, landscape body, any kind of hard body that goes on the back of like a 450, 550, 650. And the entire purpose of it is it's supposed to take the bulk material you put in the back of your truck and it takes and pulls it into the machine. It processes it and kicks it out with a press of a joystick. It's all electric and it runs the material right out and it'll fill a wheelbarrow in under three seconds. So that's the flagship product, right? Um, one of the things that guys we knew from the very get go was the mulch mates humongous. And in this industry, there's a lot of big and there's a lot of small and that's okay. 
the the smaller guys have pickup trucks, right? I mean, we like nearly all of them have pickup trucks. And so we developed something we call the truck mini. And we unveiled it at GIE last year. And then when uh, COVID hit, it really stunned uh, all of our vendors. Our vendors just couldn't get things delivered in time. And so the truck mate is just finally rolling off the production line now. I think the first one went out, I don't know, three weeks ago, something like that. Um, we finally got, got all the components in. Um, but it, what it is, is it's a, it's the same thing as mulch mate, uh, but it, it replaces the, the tailgate on a pickup truck. It goes right in your hitch receiver. There's no modification to your truck whatsoever. Uh, you simply run two wires in the battery of your truck back to the machine and that's it. There's no key. There's no on off switch. It's go, no go, get the job done, pulls the material out of your truck and conveys left or right. So that's the second product. Uh, the third product is Cartmate. Now, Cartmate, as you know, we have a, a dealio going on. We're giving away the Cartmate with you guys. And Cartmate, what it is, is it is a, a front-mounted attachment to, that goes on to any commercial mower. It can go on some residential mowers. Guys make their own hitches for it. But it has a two-inch hitch receiver on the front, and you slide it in just like a trailer hitch. And the whole premise behind the whole thing was I don't like – towing stuff. Towing stuff is very dangerous. It's a very big liability. And the uh, the knuckle, the joint that all these little tiny utility trailers you see on the market, it's literally a piece of metal with a pin. And that's it. And it's garbage. And they break and they're just, it's junk. And so our unit is a commercial built, it's a hoss. It's a tank. It's, it's meant to get beat up and it can withstand all of it. And so instead of having it behind you, all these companies are now building what? They're building stand-on mowers. And the reason they do that is because you can see what is going on around the mower better instead of sitting there trying to do one of these numbers, right? And so you put the cart out in front of you, you now can see the whole thing. It's safer. Not to mention there is no hitch joint. It can't do this. It stays in line with each other and it pivots like so, okay? And so what that means is there's less to go wrong. And you can actually zero turn the cart mate in one spot. You can stand in one spot and go, and it'll spin around for you. So that means you're more nimble, you're more agile. You can go over any train because it has articulation through a knuckle system that you'll see. Um, and then also the front wheels, they're spread kind of out like this, right? Yep. And so if you want to go through a small gate, you can actually pull pin and fold them in and you can get through a 36 inch wide gate with no issue. The reason that is, everybody I've, I've watched it over and over they take I don't know, have you seen a dingo or like a mini skid steer yep so those guys are thirty forty thousand dollars they weigh thousands of pounds and guys are trying to transport four cubic feet of material at a time mm -hmm. blows my mind that's so inefficient and i thought well i can just make this cart with these nice big tires in the front that belong on turf so it's not gonna tear the turf up and put a 10 cubic foot tub on it that you can actually expand even bigger up to 17 cubic feet and be able to transport material into a backyard that you could only get through with either a wheelbarrow or a, a mini skid that's going to tear it all up or wear your guys out. So now you're wearing out the tractor instead of your body or the, your customer's turf. So that's yep. what cart made is. Yeah. And the, uh, just uh, a couple months ago, um, I saw a lot of folks, there was a, a trend of uh, everyone stacking, mulch on the the deck of their stand on and i'm like oh come on you, you there's a better way uh yeah. and you need to enter to win so um yeah. but folks if, if uh one you need to check out uh mulch mate um when you're on their website there's actually a spot for you to be able to enter to win um that cart he's talking about um and that's uh your website's mulchmate usa, USA. Yep, mulchmateusa.com. So go check out their products and go ahead and enter to win. Um, and you're constantly innovating. I think you're one of my, I know you're one of my favorite people um, that I'm, I'm honored to, to, to know, but I know you're constantly innovating and the industry is starting to change as well. We're seeing trends all over the place, whether that's software, whether that's green um, mowers, as far as electric mowers, um, and there's a change in the tide. So what are some of the things that you've identified on the horizon that you think will be a big change for the industry? And how is how, how are you going to continue to invent to kind of stay on top of that? <laughs> so I think I probably have eight or nine things on our list that 
the world's never seen yep. um, that I'm working extremely hard on things that I have no business developing, but we're figuring it out as we go. Um, I, I can give you, I'll, I'll tell you a few small little things. Yep. Um, cart make commercial, the one we're giving away. We are putting together accessories for that cart that will allow you to, I'll say this, you could, you can, you can lift things without killing yourself Ooh. and you don't need three or four guys to steady the wheelbarrow as they try pushing it around. There you go. So that's one. Um, something that's going to be coming out very, very soon. I'll just say this. What if Cartmate had a little brother? That would be so good. So that's, yeah. And there's something. So if you can make Cartmate more affordable, not quite as capable, meaning the capacity, um, does all the same stuff, same way. You could have a, all those different features, including one extra feature that would allow you to actually use it without the mower. No one knows about that right now. There so, you go. That's an exclusive. So the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen, is for all you young bucks and, and, and gals out there, is like them, follow them, tweet them, snap them, Send signals up, whatever you need to do to follow Motion yeah. you need to do it right now. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I'm completely blown away um, with you, your story, where you're taking Mulch Mate and the company. Like I said, this is hands down one of my favorite conversations I've been able to have um, and uh, something I look forward to continuing to have. So a quick reminder for everyone. That giveaway is on the 18th of September, so you still have time to get in to win. Um, and uh, just see their awesome products, their awesome social media presence, um, and get to know Nick and his team a little bit better. But we do have a, a little, little something for everyone viewing in today. Everyone who's entered so far, um, we are going to give away a year of the Lombardy Pro subscription if you're not already using it. And we do have that name. So if you're ready, we'll do a quick, quick desk drum roll. All right, and for that, we are going to be giving it away to a Mr. Harrison Hunt. So Harrison, if you're watching, you got uh, a free year of Lawn Buddy Pro and you're still entered to win um, the, the cart mate. Um, everyone who's watching now, make sure you go to their website. Do it as soon as you get done watching our pretty faces. Go to their website, take action, and look at their awesome products. Um, we're also going to pump this out to as many places as we can possible, um, not only to our email list, um, not only on our social medias, but we're going to send it over to Terps Up Radio so they can do a segment on it um, because people need to know your story, who you are as a person, and how that translates into your company. And it's been an honor and a privilege to uh, to have you on today, sir. Um, and uh, I appreciate everything you're doing and for your friendship. Um, and so thank you very much for, for, for joining me today. Yeah, Stephen, thank you, bud. I feel likewise. It's I, I don't deserve the accolades I've been getting, but I, I just thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and I appreciate you. And before we go, we'll actually do one more thing for everyone who didn't jump off so far. So... Um, one of the things that Nick accredits some of his success to is the E-Myth. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. 100%. So if you haven't read that book, um, we both highly recommend you should. And the first person to comment on the Lawn Buddy link, um, E-Myth, I will send you a copy of that book so you can read it. And we'll have Nick on another time to tell us about the impacts that book has made to his business um, once we get ready for that drawing. Um, and... I have one last thing, one last personal question. Are you ready? Sure. Is rubbing racing? Oh, every day, all day. Well, I mean, come all on now. A man <laughs> after my own heart. So, all right, bro, right. You know what that is. You know. If you don't, Google it. So, eight, eight wheels turn better than four. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> all right, Nick. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. Uh, and keep on – being you and keep up with the innovation. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it, sir. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.